So last, last time, we were looking at displacement reactions of the halide ions, uh, the halides, um, and we said that chlorine is quite, wants to become chloride ions, that's quite easy, but iodine becoming iodide ions is harder, so if I mix iodide with chlorine, chlorine will go that way, and uh, iodide will go that way. So those were displacement reactions that we were, we were looking at. What we're going to look now, uh, reactions of the halide ions, but last time we were starting kind of looking at how good these were at uh, going the other way. So these guys, chlorine becoming um, chloride, are you happy that chlorine's been reduced there? It starts at oxidation state zero, then becomes minus one. So he's been reduced, so we call him an oxidizing agent. So he's, okay, good. Um, so we're now starting with chloride ions, um, or bromide ions, or iodide ions, and we're reacting each one of these with sulfuric acid. And we're going to try and work out, first of all, what we're making and why it works out this way. So let's have a look at this boy here. We've got sodium chloride, the same as we'll go for sodium fluoride as well. So I've got sodium chloride. What's my oxidation state of chlorine there? Minus one. Minus one, yeah. Let's go, let's not worry about this one, but let's go all the way down here, what's in there? He is minus one there. So this is not a redox reaction. Chloride has not been able to become chlorine. So chloride becoming chlorine is hard. It doesn't want to do that. Sulfuric acid can't do that. Um, chloride is not going to go to chlorine, um, which makes sense. Is everybody having that make sense? Because if this is easy, then going the opposite way is going to be harder. Yeah, good. Let's look at bromide now. Bromide there is going to be minus one. What about if I skip across here? What about, oh, I've just got lots of red pens. Um, what about bromine here? Minus one as well. So has anything happened there? At all. No. Okay. However, what will happen is this reaction keeps going. So that is the same as this one, but a further reaction will occur. I've made the HBr. The HBr, which is still minus one there, carries on reacting with sulfuric acid to give me this boy here. What would he be called? Uh, S for sulfur. Sulfur dioxide. Yeah. What's my oxidation state of sulfur there? Oxygen's minus two. So plus four. Plus four. Yeah. And what about bromine there? Zero. Zero for bromine. So bromine has been oxidized. What would be the oxidation number of sulfur there? Could be quite difficult. Hydrogen's going to be plus one. Oxygen's minus two. So, yeah, you're right. So, it should be. Plus six. We're in a supportive learning environment. <laughs> We're plus six, two, plus four. So, sulfur has been reduced and bromine has been oxidized. So, bromide is able to reduce sulfur. So, it's a better. Uh, reducing agent, which means it's more easily oxidized than chlorine. Let's just go back to this one. If you've got HCl, what when you would, if you did that reaction, HCl when you see it produced, it gives you like steamy fumes in air. You'd get the same for hydrogen bromide, but what else would you see? You'd see um, a yellow gas given off, and also they could turn brown. Where's my yellow gas? So that's colourless actually, yeah. Um, you would see bromine, because it's an exothermic reaction, you actually see fumes of bromine coming off. So although I put liquid there, it would get hot enough that you'd get fumes of bromine coming off. Okay, and then let's look at this boy. So I've got sodium iodide now. This gives you a whole mess of products, yeah. Isn't hydrochloric acid soluble? Just like sulfuric acid. Yes, but this is concentrated, so I've got a lot of water there. It's going to produce, you, some of it would dissolve, but you're producing it so much it would actually fume and come off, yeah. 
Um, I'm not using dilute acid here. I'm using like constant acid. Um, and then I've got sodium iodide here. Iodine here is going to be minus one. Hopefully we're happy with that. And over here is going to be minus one. So again, this is the same as this equation. So you need to go, but let's have a look at what happens here. Iodine here is minus one. Here he's going to be zero. But I make this boy here, he is called H2S hydrogen sulfide. You may have come across that gas. Quick, have a look at that. What's my oxidation number of sulfur there? Minus two. Yeah, minus two, because hydrogen is plus one. So sulfur, sulfur is still plus six here. Sulfur has gone all the way from plus six to minus two. So iodide, iodine has been able to reduce it all the way down from plus six to minus two. So he's a much better reducing agent than bromine, and bromine is better than chlorine. You're happy with that? So that's why you get all these situations. What would you see here? Hydrogen iodide, you see steamy fumes coming off. What about iodine here? It's quite an exothermic reaction. If it was a solid, but if, it, if it's quite quite hot, what do you reckon the iodine's going to do? Yeah, you'd get like purple fumes perhaps. Um, what, what about hydrogen sulfide? What would you That's see? A gas, is it a gas? Yeah. No, it's a colourless gas, but it, I don't know if, you, if you've ever had a, a stink bomb or anything like that, <coughs> it gives you that really rotten egg smell. It's normally hydrogen sulfide which gives you that really bad, horrible smell. So that's why you see the trends that you do. So you need to be able to explain that. And it's a reverse, you know we talked about last time about um, halides, how good they are, so halogens, how good halogens are at gaining an electron. This is a reverse, because this way they're losing electrons. So I'm saying that iodide is easier to lose an electron because the electron is further away from the nucleus and therefore more easy. Also, it's like metals. For this one, bromine here is losing electrons. So my bromide is losing electron to become um, elemental bromine there. So it's a reverse trend in terms of reactivity you need to talk about.